Thanks very much, President Officer. Like others, I welcome the fact that Jamie McGregor got this debate tonight, and I was happy to both sign his motion, but I'm also too happy to see him sign a complimentary motion that uh, I tabled myself. President Officer, there is widespread concern amongst crofters about the decision that the government's taken, uh, but more widely than just crofters, as Sarah Boyack has mentioned, uh, the RSPB have expressed real concern, uh, the North West Cattle Producers Association have expressed concern, uh, buyers indeed in the South, in the way that John Scott and Jamie McGregor referred to, are also expressing concern about the impact on them and the stock that they can purchase. And the NFUS brief for tonight's debate is really an excellent summary of all the benefits of the scheme, uh, but it's also an excellent case for why you should keep the scheme in some form. Now, our office uh, in Inverness, myself and Rhoda Grant and Dave Stewart's office, uh, have had over 400 contacts from crofters about this matter. And they're expressing genuine anxiety, not contrived anxiety, genuine concerns about the future. They're concerned about the potential end to cattle production on some of our islands and some of our most remote communities. They're concerned about the quality, uh, the threats to the quality of stock, concerned about the threats to the health uh, of cattle. And with the threat to the health of cattle, comes a threat to the reputation of Highland stock, and with that comes a threat to price, and that's all hugely important to crofters. But there's also a threat to habitat and the importance of habitat, which we know that cattle have got a particular role uh, in assisting. And in that regard, it also acts against the government's own objectives in relation to each and every one of these matters. It is, as others have said, a pragmatic, practical scheme, uh, and that's why it's lasted uh, over 100 years. Now, I noted uh, that state aids have crept into the argument in recent times in some government comment, although I did note when the, government, uh, the Minister made his announcement in October, he did not mention state aids as a reason for ending the scheme. Now, I've been exploring this matter, as others have. Uh, I've been using SPICE to help with that, and I can find no reason to not continue uh, under the current de minimis limits. Uh, currently, uh, currency fluctuations in recent times would also support that argument and actually make it more certain that it meets de minimis limits. And that's supported by the views of the NAFUS, who have researched this matter, and indeed the Crofters Foundation. And if the Minister has reasons for arguing that it doesn't qualify under de minimis, please let him set those out in great detail so that we can scrutinise those adequately. And even if uh, in future there are challenges if the scheme ever got above de minimis in meeting EU rules, then even then it is surely worth a negotiation with the EU in an attempt to try and find an accommodation that would allow the scheme to continue. And I have no doubt the EU are not out to get the West Highlands of Scotland, which is what is going to be affected most particularly, but also many other parts of the Highlands and Islands, and they are not unreasonable people, despite what the popular press write about them, and there is a case to be made to keep this excellent scheme. Uh, and indeed, uh, as others have done, Jim Mather and Fergus Ewing made those points themselves uh, only a few years ago. The Minister also referred, as did Dave Thompson, to the cost of the scheme. Uh, the Minister referring to it in his October statement and in subsequent press comment. And those costs that Dave Thompson quoted include investment assumptions. And those investments have not been made. Let's be clear about that. So there's no major cost difference between this year that we've now entered uh, and the previous year, or indeed the year after uh, if projections were to be carried forward. Uh, possible changes to capital charges coming in accounting rules for government may in fact make it even more uh, secure as a proposition. Uh, and since the costs have been published, the Cook report has come out, and that shows that whatever the cost of the current bull scheme, the alternatives are either more expensive or they're problematic. The decentralised scheme that Shucksmith wanted is much more expensive. The private hire arrangements, which is part of the Minister's solution, is not a real runner. There is no real private market. Private hire people are getting out of the market for health concerns. There's no guarantee under the private market you would get a bull. There's no guarantee of its health. There's no guarantee of its quality. So it's not a viable alternative. President officer, as others have said, this is a good scheme. Crofters are reasonable people. They are very concerned about this. Their simple request to the government is to reconsider and reverse the decision that they have taken.